Um, and then we also uh, have the next speaker, James Schneider, who uh, is the current uh, state chair of the Iowa Libertarian Party, and he was also um, uh, intimately involved with the success we had in the Midwest for Gary Johnson's uh, 2016 election. So um, with that, uh, with that, all that, I don't think I have to tell how awesome it is anymore. <laughs> Give it up for James Schneider, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, can you guys hear me okay in the back? All right. Um, I, I'm going to first have to comment. This, it's great that you guys are having this in the in the evening and at a brewery like this. Uh, you know, like we have ours uh, in the early morning, and usually we have a social in the afternoon or in the night previous. So uh, everybody's kind of stumbling in, hungover, and most people are about an hour late. So uh, you know, this is something I have to pass on to, as uh, you know, a lessons learned or, or something. But I guess uh, John asked me to come and speak to you guys today uh, about what we've done in Iowa and how we've changed over the last few years. Um, when I joined the Libertarian Party of Iowa, um, I was, uh, you know, a pissed off Republican. Well, that's the easiest way to put it. Uh, I thought that I was a Ron Paul person. I thought that the GOP had really screwed him over, and I was done with them. So I came to the 2013 Libertarian Convention of Iowa, and there were about 15 people in the room, uh, and they talked about what they had done in the previous year. And uh, that consisted of Gary Johnson being on the ballot and running one state house rep. Uh, it was rather disappointing, and they went through officer elections and did a lot of things, and there was 12 seats uh, for their executive committee, and Nobody wanted any of them. Um, you had a bunch of non-participating people being involved, and uh, they never really did anything. Um, so I ended up getting involved with them at that time. And uh, since then, we had about 3,000 registered libertarians, and we've grown that to about 10,000 now. Um, we went from two candidates being on the ballot in 2012 to uh, 14 in 2014, uh, 29 last year, and already this year I've got 56 committed candidates, and I've inter interviewed 78. So uh, there's a lot of potential. When I was up here last year, um, you know, I, I drew a lot of parallels between South Dakota and Iowa. You have very similar demographics. It's generally very conservative in you know rural areas and very uh, liberal in inside the city, um, and uh, there's there's just so much potential. We, we started recruiting candidates uh, as, as much as we could. Uh, in Iowa, about 40% of the state legislative seats go unopposed, and most of these guys go their entire careers. They'll go 20 years without ever seeing any type of opposition. Uh, we had candidates that had never even considered running for office before, and they stood up and they ran low budget campaigns uh, and got phenomenal results. Uh, Josh Miller, for example, ran in House 78, and he spent $300 and got 28% of the vote against the incumbent Republican, and the incumbent Republican spent $35,000 running against him. Uh, to me, that's phenomenal. I mean, some people look at that and say that's a landslide victory, but I look at that and be like, wow, we drained their coffers of 35 grand and got 28% of the vote. And after that, his campaign team ended up forming a, a county affiliate. Um, five of those different people are now running for office that were involved in his campaign, from city councilman up to state rep and state senate. Um, you know, running for office helps build in infrastructure. Uh, and th that's the, the biggest takeaway about getting people to run for office. Uh, I encourage everybody in here, if you haven't done it, like, consider it. Uh, <clears throat> how do I say this? Uh, uh, you know, if we're going to have this many candidates, uh, they're, we're, we're, we're just going to build up, and you're, you're doing a disservice if you don't have a good team put together around you. Uh, have five or six people at a minimum helping you out on your campaign and have them build up a group. Uh, we had dead areas all over Iowa and now they're thriving. 
Um, I, I guess I didn't, you know, that was really short, just a few minutes, but uh, I really like to open it up to, to questions from, from anybody. I, I mean, I, I've done a lot of candidate recruiting. I've worked out on, on campaigns full time. If anybody has any questions, if you've been considering running for office or building a county affiliate, I'd, I'd appreciate it if, if you could just ask some questions and we can share some answers with the rest of the group. Uh, mostly it was uh, targeted Facebook ads and online ads. Um, in well, last year, in the early spring, uh, we did a uh, targeted ad on Facebook across the state doing different keywords. And we recruited, I think it was, well, it was over 30 people we interviewed, but we, we did that down to 14 candidates. And it, we spent $15 on that ad. Uh, and then after we had that those people recruited we started helping them out at the state level doing targeted ads in their specific areas to help recruit uh, campaign staff for them uh, and it, it kind of blew up in some areas uh, Scott County the, the Quad Cities down with uh, Moline and Davenport uh, that that was one area that it was completely dead we had no active group whatsoever and uh, we're running five candidates in that metro area right now and uh, I mean, they're the size of our state party now. I, they, I, they have 50 people show up to meetings. Uh, you know, they're, they're monthly meetings. Yeah. Um, Aaron? The candidate that ran on $300 what was, did you do a lot of door knocking? Or what did you do? Um, it was mostly online stuff, and the $300 that he bought was mostly on t-shirts uh, for when they did parades in his area. It was a rural area, and it encompassed three counties. So they did a lot of parades, and they, they did some door knocking. He handed out business cards, but um, he didn't do, um, you know, print 10,000 rat cards and distribute those. And in rural areas like that, it, it's harder than hell to, to go out and do door knocking because, I mean, you're going to go a quarter mile between each farmstead, and, you know, it's not an effective use of your time. Um, anybody else? I guess, I, I'm sorry I was a little short on time. Uh, but I'll be around uh, the rest of the night here, and if you have any questions about running for office, please ask. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I've got, I've got two shameless plugs real quick. Uh, I'm gonna set some flyers out on the table here. Um, I'm, I'm helping uh, uh, coordinate a um, Midwest Regional Convention with uh, Dave Demarest. He's the Region 6 rep on the Libertarian National Committee. Um, it's going to be uh, next Memorial Day weekend uh, in Omaha. So uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, to get people to help out with that. And uh, uh, it'd be nice if South Dakota was a co-host with that. We can talk about that later. I'll, I'll talk about that with Aaron. Uh, and then to get people to come down there. Co-hosts will have uh, you know, like reduced ticket prices and stuff like that. And we'll have a lot of training opportunities and a lot of uh, bigger speakers there. It'll be like a mini uh, national convention. And then I'm also uh, a member of the Libertarian Leadership Academy, and uh, they also do a lot of training. Larry Sharp is in there. Um, there's, I don't know, probably a hundred different videos on different uh, areas to, to learn about running a campaign or being a candidate. And uh, if you want to give me your email address, I'll get you signed up for free. Uh, it's just a, a great area to go in there and watch videos at your own free will. And uh, every Wednesday they have a live webinar. Uh, Larry usually does one about once a month, but uh, there are a lot of other great videos uh, or great webinars that happen. Uh, one of the ones a couple weeks ago was uh, knocking on a thousand doors for a dollar or digital doors for a dollar. And uh, it was a phenomenal resource for, for libertarian candidates and activists. But anyhow. Thank you for that plug, and uh, thank you. Good job. James Snyder is smart, one of the smartest dudes in the room, and that's why I invited him here, and I'm glad he drove all the way over here. Um, 